Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the session 2 group feedback presentation, Jesus gives group feedback regarding how to measure our personal progression and current state by examining our feelings about developing faith, seeking truth, taking love in action, and feeling and experiencing all emotions. Recorded on the 25th of May 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay, so the subject that I want to talk to you about is measuring. Where I am in the process of understanding and releasing my unloving self. Time for me to put that one away, I think. Just let me grab another. All right. So that's the subject I would like to discuss with you. Interesting question. If I get angry a lot, where do you think I am? In my addictions, not getting met. If I feel satisfied a lot and I haven't made much progress, where do you think I am? My addictions, not getting met. If I don't feel I've got much problem at all, where do you think I am? Denial. <laughs> if I've got a physical pain, in my body about a particular, you know, whatever it is in a particular area of my body, where do you think I am? Denial of what? Because I might have gone through this, mightn't I? I could be in denial of that, couldn't I? Still not at the pain, but just not let, yet feeling that, couldn't I? But am I there if I've accepted my facade? Yes. If I haven't accepted my facade, there. Okay. So, let's look at four issues, four ways of measuring. The first method is truth. What do you feel my feelings about truth would be here? Complete denial? What would be my feelings about truth here? Here. Well, no, that would be here. Oh, I know everything would be here. If it's here, it would be, if I, my feelings about truth would be anywhere here, my feelings of truth would be. Scared of truth, my brothers and sisters. Frightened of truth. Huh? How many of you are frightened of truth still? Most of you, yeah, frightened of truth. Why would you be frightened of truth? Because the global terror still exists and you still have false beliefs about truth. You still think the lie is preferable to the truth. Does that make sense? It's definitely in the facade because the facade believes the lie is preferable to the truth. Does that make sense? Once you get to love the truth, then you might be starting to get down here, right? So can you see, truth is a great way of measuring where you are. If your attitude to it, your emotion about it. Right? So if your emotion about truth is, I'm scared of it, then we're here. If your emotion of truth is, I'm resistive to it, then we're probably way up here. If the emotion of truth is, I love it, I love it. 
right? Then that's a good indication that we're now getting down into here, away from our facade, living out out of our facade now. Instead of living in it, we're living out of it. We're now challenging our facade. Challenging your facade. You think what? Remember, one of the ways of identifying a facade is the facade loves the lie. It portrays the lie to its environment, so it loves the lie. Right? That's what it does. It portrays the lie to the environment. So a person who loves truth would not do that. So that tells you where you are, their attitude to truth, how you feel about it. Now, can you see in each question I've asked, how do you feel about it? Can you see that? So if I feel scared of the truth, then that tells me that I'm probably still liking my facade. But if I no longer feel scared of the truth, and in fact I love the truth, then that tells me I'm starting to get towards the truth of my life, the, towards the pain and the other things. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I'm frightened of truth, I'm up here. I have to do work up here. If I love the truth, now I'm probably down in this area here, working the way through some things here. Now sometimes you can love the truth on one thing. Can you not? And hate the truth on another thing. All right? So, so remember that this diagram applies to each individual emotion, not to your whole condition. Many of you have been applying it to your whole condition rather than to each individual emotion. Right? Now, with one exception, that is, this emotion here does govern a huge amount of things and therefore a huge amount of emotions this global refusal of your terror. Does that make sense? That, of course, does that. But aside from that, sometimes you can go through this whole process and actually feel some pain and release a bit of facade in the process and see the facade, release it, get down to here where you love the truth about that particular issue, so you feel about that particular issue and you release some pain about that issue and your life changes while you've still got denial in other areas. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. But the global refusal of your terror is going to affect every area. It's going to have an effect on everything you process. And that's why it's a great emotion to get rid of. All right. So truth is a great way. You're, and here we're saying my feelings about truth is a great way of measuring where I'm at, my feelings about truth. Now, what's the opposite to truth? F fear, yeah, lies are all caused by fear, isn't it? The false appearing real, expectations appearing real, fear is truth, is the anecdote to fear. It's the thing that opposes fear. It releases fear. So, so we can say fear is the opposite to it. Okay, so we can also ask ourselves, well, how do I feel about fear? So if I still feel frightened of it, then that's an indication I'm up here still. Does that make sense? Because I haven't done this yet. Right? It's also an indication of whether I live in it, if I live in it or not. So the majority of us live in fear. In other words, we have the attitude of the justification of fear. So we say, of course I haven't done that. You know, that, that's not normal to do that. Not, we see that whenever our fear is triggered, we think that whatever we've done after that is normal. Right? And if we believe that, then that we're still up here. So when I say, and you, I've, I've given you these illustrations before, you know, my, your wife comes on, she put a new pair of jeans on. <laughs> How do I look in this? And, and she's a bit large on the rear. <laughs> but can't say that. So isn't that fear? Isn't that fear that you're feeling? Not being able to say that. Not being able to tell the truth about what you feel. She's asked you what you feel. <laughs> Somebody just yelled out, Bruce yelled out, survival. But yeah, that's right. You're afraid. 
for your very life. <laughs> and perhaps for your sexual activity in the next three years or so. And, uh, and so what do you do? So you lie. So that tells you that fear generated a lie. So therefore truth, you're still afraid of truth. You're still afraid of the power of truth and the benefit to truth and so forth. So that tells you you're up here. Does that make sense? So, so these are, this is one way you can measure where you're at. Now there's a lot more we could say about that, but let's, let's uh, move on to what else we can do to determine what's going on. Let's look at this issue of faith, which is our, another quality we need, isn't it? One of the tools. Let's examine our faith. So let's look at it here. So a person up here feels what about faith, do you think? Yeah, they like to be cynical, doubtful, unsure, don't they? Yep. By the time you get down to here, you're going to have to have some pretty solid faith to even get through that stage, aren't you? to be sure that you can get through it, to have some confidence in God and the way God's made you and all of that. So that means by the, by the time you're here, you must have developed some faith and, you have, and you're not so impacted. Now, also, a person who has faith chooses to not sin even though it's hard sometimes to not sin. Right? In other words, they know that if they don't sin, they won't be adding to their problems down the track. A person who has no faith in that sins freely. In other words, they engage their addictions, they engage this next addiction, the next addiction, without even any thought. They just go ahead and do it. And they look back and they go, oh, there I went again. But, but by the time that's happened, it's already done, right? You've already done it, so it's already done. So what we, what we need to see is that if, we, if we're doing things automatically in our addictions, then obviously we don't have very much faith. Because we wouldn't automatically do things in our addictions if we had faith. Do you see that? We would, we would check ourselves. We'd go, hang on a sec, here we go again. I'm off on my addiction again. I can feel it dragging me. I can feel it pulling me. I can feel it trying to make me do something. But I've got to not do it. <laughs> a person who has some faith would, would stop themselves in the tracks there, wouldn't they? Right, Bruce, you want to say if we even pass them? Right. But aren't you just using your willpower there? Um, no. Well, faith is a. Remember, faith is a global emotion. So, I, I would say you're using your faith to stop your action. <laughs> that, that's even if you go back and check. Yeah, you you, you bump you're into a, that uh, that addiction. You're about to engage your addiction. Yep. You pull and, yourself back. And I've got and I've got some faith. If I've got some faith, I'll pull myself back from it. Some faith that if I do that, it's going to be a negative consequence. And yeah. it doesn't mean that I've dealt okay. with the original cause yet. But yeah. it, as long as I've got some faith, I will actually feel like, no, if I go ahead and do that, it's going to be a negative consequence. And if I don't do that, I'll have a positive outcome. So I'm going to do the positive thing right? because yeah, of my that, faith. Yeah, so that's the difference because I guess you, know, you can hop out of, a, out of an addiction pretty quickly, but... It'll still come up and up and up and up. It, because it will continue to come up and a person who has faith would go, okay, I need to delve down into this and find it, wouldn't they? Yeah. They'd do that as well. Yep. Thanks. Yep. So what's the opposite of faith really? Doubt? Yeah, doubt, cynicism. Doubt, cynicism. <clears throat> yep, if we go down to Glenda. <clears throat> So this is where um, regular reflection would be good. That's what I'm getting at, yes. Yep. It's good you arrived there. <laughs> so yes, what, I, what I'm saying is a person who is self-reflective and self-aware understands the feelings they have about the four primary tools. Does that make sense to you? They feel the feelings they have. And therefore, because they feel the feelings they have, they measure where they are. All right. So let's write down the other two primary tools. 
which were action and, and emotion war, you could say humility, couldn't you? Or emotion. Can you see the way I measure where I'm at is my feelings about these tools. That's how I measure where I'm at. So if I feel afraid to take action, can you see I'm probably still up here somewhere. But if I feel like taking action and it's exciting, right, then where do you think I am? Must be down here somewhere, mustn't I? The person who is taking action, who's excited uh, about taking a loving action, then that person obviously really wants to take the loving action. They've already dealt with quite a lot, obviously, of terror about taking action. And, and they ignore fears about taking action. They take action even though they might be afraid. That's what they do. Right? They love to take action. They, do, they get a whole heap of things done in their life that are all in harmony with God's version of love. That's what they do. And if we look at this issue of humility again, like if I, if I have an emotional experience and it lasts me five seconds and it's over, then can you say, can you say you're down here yet? Not really, right? Because you're not yet open to accepting your pain. Right? A lot of the pain has to come out and it's going to require a bit of crying and sometimes for an hour or two and if you can only do it for a few minutes on an issue and you still know there's more there and nothing much is changing, then that indicates that you're still up here somewhere in the deconstruction process. Does that make sense? So the, so the beauty of understanding the tools is that you can also now use your feelings about the tools to analyse where you're at. And it's your feelings about the tools, how you personally feel about these tools, that determine where you really are in the scheme of things. A person who is, who is passionate about these things has usually finished up getting through this and they're usually down in this area here. Right? Anger, rage, all those emotions, denial, all these kind of things, excuses, shifting the blame, justifying, all those, remember those tools we use to resist truth and the tools we use to resist faith and the tools we use to resist action, which were all those, those that, you know, denial, excuses, lies, justifications, blames, judging, all those tools we use to resist the development of those qualities, they will indicate we're up here, yet to work our way through those particular things. Does that make sense? So it's pretty simple, isn't it, to see where we're at? And, and is it bad to see where we're at? It's excellent to see where we're at. Why? Because you can't change where, from where you're at unless you know where you're at. <laughs> it's, it's essential to know where you're at. And this is what I see a lot of people doing. Yeah, and we've mentioned this in the pageant messages, actually. A lot of people are telling themselves they've received God's love when they haven't. They tell themselves that a positive feeling they have must be God's love when it is not. And they tell themselves a whole heap of lies about this because they want to believe they've progressed further than they have. And the desire to believe you've progressed further than you have is a part of your facade. Yeah, it is. Hmm. So that's what I wanted to raise with you, a bit of feedback. One reason why I've raised it is because I feel it's really good to know how you're going in different areas, you know. Now some areas you'll find you, you've developed some of this and you're probably down here or maybe here. But other areas you'll find, you know, if you haven't dealt with that, 
global issue. Obviously, that's a major thing. But with most areas, you will find there's, you're in various ranges up here. Right from denial, right from even intellectual denial. You know, you don't even know. Like, you're totally ignorant of what's there. You know, and so when you ask a question about something and I start talking about, oh, it's this particular problem, you go, I don't know, what in the hell are you talking about? I don't agree with you at all. Well, that, that's like way up here in the denial area, you know, and that's okay. God's not going to punish you for being in denial. God's laws are already trying to correct it. Right? So God's not going to get out there's a stick and put you over his lap and give you a bit of a belting for being in denial. That is a God knows that he gave you will and that is, is your free will choice to be in denial if that's what you want to be in. Right? And you're allowed to be in denial. You're allowed to stay in denial for the rest of your life if that's what you really want. You're not going to be very happy doing it, but that's the penalty, the unhappiness that comes from remaining blocked to true emotional expression, you know, releasing pain and also getting into a state of love. Now, what we've done over the last four days now, so we're near the end of our, of our four days in this section, is we've fir the first section was all about looking at understanding our unloving self. You remember? And, and up until the area of accepting our facade, most of us felt pretty connected with that material, didn't we? Right? So that tells you also where you have an affinity to the material is usually also where you're at. Does that make sense? And then when we start getting into the global emotions and the deconstruction of the facade and, and the accepting and rele we're releasing our pain, most of us get a bit at sea there, a bit confused. Yesterday we were a bit confused. Today feeling a bit confused. Can't, can't even ask questions on the subject. So that tells me so that we don't have an affinity to that yet as a group. Does that make sense? So that tells us where we're at too. And that is the, so we're, we're at the point where we're still coming to terms with our unloving self, in other words, and in terms of understanding it, but yet at the point where we really want to get rid of it. Does that make sense? And that doesn't apply to everybody, but most people are in, the, are in that phase. Most people who hear divine truth on the planet are still in, in that place. So, so that's where we're at. The key is to not condemn where we're at, to not judge where we're at, to not deny where we're at, to not shift the blame onto someone else about where we're at, not, not use those other tools that we use to deny developing these qualities. Right? We don't do that. Instead, we come face to face where we're at. We get onto this process of accepting our facade. We, we do it. We go ahead and do it. We see ourselves for what we really are right now, and once we can do that, now we have a great capacity to change. And in fact, what will happen is once you allow yourself to see yourself as you really are, you'll probably not be that happy with where you are. And that will be a part of the motivation to change. Where you go, well, I know how to change now. I know I've got to just delve into this from an emotional perspective now. And I've got to go through some phases Accepting my facade, my first phase, if you like, that I've got to go through, and then getting down to deconstructing my facade, another phase I've got to go through, and I accept these phases are ahead of me, and I start my way of working my way through it because I want to. And one, and one thing I must say to you is you want to because you have enough love of yourself to do it. And I feel that's something that many of you haven't yet considered, having enough love of yourself to do it. Not just love of others and love of God, but also enough love of yourself to do it. So part of developing my loving self is developing a state where I finish up loving myself enough to go through what I have to go through to become perfect. And that means being gentle with yourself while you do it, being kind while you do it, but not letting it go, not, not you know, letting yourself off the hook for doing it, 
but really wanting to do it, developing an aspiration within your heart to do it. God rewards those pure aspirations. Yeah. So that's what I would like to encourage you to do. And, uh, and, and in a minute we'll have a bit of a review of the whole process so that we can remember the main points of it all and then we'll give you some homework about it. But, but what I'd like to encourage you to do is to be willing to examine oneself, examine myself openly with this knowledge that how I feel about these primary tools determines where I am. And if you're honest with yourself about how you feel about these things in your heart, then you'll know fairly accurately where you are. And it's good to know where you are. Because once you know where you are, you know what can change or what you need to change. Paul, you'd like to ask? Um, developing self-love such a, a big one, and I was just wondering how you have um, developed that within yourself. Well, I haven't done it properly yet, so I can't really tell you the answer to that question. Um, I'm working on it now, but it, it's been a major problem of mine major problem and uh, it's taken me it's taken me many years to actually realize how big of a problem it is in other words it, I, I was in a lot of denial about my lack of self-love you know when it comes to loving others I was always pretty like good at that do you know what I mean and, and very honest about that but when it comes to love of self I was pretty bad with like that's where most of my problems are and I'm still working on them so when I get closer to dealing with them, I'll tell you what it's like. <laughs> but, but what I'm finding is they are the most difficult emotions to deal with because y you believe the way everyone treats you and the way the world you know, acts towards you is normal. You know what I mean? So, so you sort of accept this norm, which is actually quite destructive, self-destructive to accept the norm of how the world treats you. And in my case, the world treats me pretty bad. So, so I allow quite a lot, you know, I have a fairly low norm. But my, society's norm of self-love and mine, mine's lo lower than society's. It has been. Do you know what I mean? Like what you would tolerate in your day-to-day -day life with regard to love of self, I, I would tolerate and ten times more that. Right, so that indicates that I, my self-love is much, much lower than even society's general self-love. And uh, so I've had to do a lot of work on that issue and I'm still doing a lot of work on that issue right now. That's, that's where I'm spending most of my time, actually. Um, you can progress quite a lot. What I've found is you can progress quite a lot by just having a lot of faith and trust in God and a lot of faith and trust in truth. And a lot of, you know, you, you receive a lot of information from God that way. But, but if you're resistive to self-loving oneself, um, there's a whole sort of, there was a whole area that I was blind to. It, it was like I didn't even care how anybody treated me. Does that make sense? Didn't even bother me that I got treated badly. And, and I had to even get to the point where it started to bother me just to even see that it was happening. Does that make sense? You mean allow it to hurt you, like to feel the feeling of that, that it was hurting you? Yeah, and also then to feel a bit angry that people were treating me that way. You know, I had to allow that too. Because I didn't even feel angry about it. It was just normal, so I didn't feel angry about it or anything. So I've had to allow myself to feel angry about it. That's helped me see where what's happening. And then, and then I've had to allow myself to see what my investments were, like in allowing people to treat me badly all the time. And, and I'm still working through a lot of these issues, Paul. So it's a great question, but I haven't resolved it myself yet. So I can't really answer it completely at this stage. Um, yeah. 
because it's just such an awesome reminder, like accepting our facade, accepting these things in ourselves, which are not very acceptable, it seems, you know. So um, to constantly remember the self-love is huge, I feel. It is, yeah. I've had to remind myself constantly about it in order to stay in harmony with the truth on the matter. But that still it's not a comfortable process for me. I'm I'm in I'm in I still have a lot I had a lot of and still have a lot of false beliefs about treatment of myself. Does that make sense? And so I'm in this cycle of getting to the pain, like but I'm still working through these fears and false beliefs about you know, why I'm not allowing the pain to just rise. A lot of it's about how I will be treated in the future. You know, I was tortured to death in the first century. Still some fear associated with those particular things occurring. Uh, we get a lot of, myself and Mary, get a lot of attack, obviously. Some of it's quite, like, a lot of it's very violently abusive. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's a lot of fear that I have to work through about the issue and so forth. So I'm down in this area about it. I don't have the global refusal of it anymore, you know, and I'm quite comfortable with feeling my emotions, but I'm still not getting to feel what it's all about, you know what I mean? So I'm in this area here about it, yeah. So until I get through that area, I can't really explain to you what, you know, what, and what will be what I will do when I haven't done it yet? And you're unique in that situation because of your life. Well, like I said, I have a much worse view of myself than the average person on the planet has of themselves. So, so it is a big problem for me. Yeah. But when, um, when I say you're unique because of because of your past, you know. Um, well, I feel it's something that all the 14 are going to face, certainly. But, uh, but you know, um, being the person who's always the first person who gets attacked um, does have a large bearing on how I feel about my worth. Does that make sense? And what I've realised is that a lot of my worth issues are really about how much I've been attacked and letting myself feel the pain of how much I've been attacked in my life. So I can remember getting abused by other children when I was two or three, you know. Spirit-induced ch children just abusing me. Um, it's been pretty constant most of my life, even in this life. In the first century, a lot of my memories are about getting hurt and abused. So, you know, I have quite a, a lot... What I'm realising is a lot of my worth issues, so-called worth issues, are actually where I'm not feeling my... how hurt I feel about being attacked. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I'm having to work through those issues. But yeah, I haven't really solved it, resolved the issue yet. I'm sure when I do that you'll see I'll make some significant strides forward, actually, because I can feel it's a huge issue for me. And I feel that once I make some strides forward on the issue, then there'll be quite significant changes for me because um, I still have quite a negative view of myself. And that's preventing a lot of things from developing as a result. So when things start changing in my life very rapidly, you'll know that I've probably started to address those issues. It's my main, well, from what I see at the moment, it's probably my only main issue left. And but, it, but it's a big issue. And can we assist you, at, like we assist our other brothers and sisters through prayer, can we assist you and Mary in that way as well? Certainly through prayer, if it's sincere, but um, your assistance of me doing it in an emotional way is difficult because um, it just depends on if I'm ahead of you or not, you know what I mean? Like if I'm not ahead of you on a certain issue. So, so Mary has helped me in some ways with my worth issues because she has a higher worth view of her worth than I have of mine. And so that's helped me see where mine's been out of uh, out of kilter, you know. Um, yeah. So, see, so a lot of people mistake my actions as an issue of of me, as if I have a fairly good worth. But actually, my actions at the moment are primarily driven by my faith in God and my love of the truth, and they're not actually driven by my sense of worth. Does that make sense? So, so what people interpret as me having a good 
feeling of my of of worth about myself is actually just me having a good feeling about God and a good feeling about truth, and not about myself. And uh, and the you know I have extreme amounts of pain in my body in the worth based areas of my body, extreme amounts of pain every moment of the day, now. Um, and that's probably going to continue until I deal with the issue of worth. Um, so, so yeah, that's where I'm at with the issue of worth. Is that a bit of a surprise for you? Yes. Yeah, Why is that? <laughs> yeah, but um, see, so for me, see. The worth issue doesn't affect my kindness so much because that's how I treat other people, not how I treat me. You'll find I'm not very kind towards myself. Right? So that, that's the issue of worth at play. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I'm learning to be gentle with myself, kind to myself, those kind of things. Yeah. So good question though. Um, once once I've worked through it, hopefully. Um, but but um, what I see is that the majority of people on Earth have far less of a problem of worth than I do, and so you know, there's probably things you could teach me about it at this stage. Um, so I'm very observant with what I notice people do who have some worth, you know, what I notice they do in terms of looking after themselves and caring for themselves and so forth. And that's helping me realise where I'm out of harmony with love of self. And um, But the key is getting to the emotional side of it, which is a lot about how much I've been attacked and abused in my life, both this life and the previous one. Um, so I'm having to revisit a lot of that uh, processing that I thought I'd finished, fr but from the aspect of worth rather than just from the aspect of the event itself. So yeah, eventually I hope to get through it and I don't know how long it will take me but uh, I've been working on it now pretty solidly for the last, well really ever since I met Mary that started to sort of expose the issues and then, you know, it's probably been the last few years where I've become more aware of what the issues are, like in the sense of aware of all the ways in which I've used um, addictions to avoid gaining a sense of worth and then um, and then yeah the last year I've been really focusing on the emotion side of it the false belief side of it and working my way through them yeah and and I feel really happy about it to be honest because it's um because I have a really strong feeling it's my last issue to address so so that gives me some feeling of like feeling, you know, joy to realise that it, it might be a big issue. It might take quite a few years to resolve, but um, once I get through it, I'm going to feel completely different. Yeah, I know I'm going to feel completely. I can feel smidges of it sometimes, you know, like where I process something, and all of a sudden I feel very much more connected to God. And like I feel after I deal with deal with the worth issues, that's when I'll start, you know, performing miracles and healing people and things like that. Um, just all that will start as well. There'll be a lot of changes, I feel. Mm. But they, they won't happen until I deal with it. And, and because it's fairly strongly entrenched and has been all my life, like I had a part of my bowel in the worth area cut out when I was uh, 18 months old. It was dead. Um, that tells you how little energy is flowing in that area of my body. So... Um, you know, so it's been a problem the whole life I've had here on Earth this time. And um, so it's going to, you know, take me a while to probably access it all. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting through it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Alan, you'd like to? This is an excellent subject. Um, as, as we know, um, pretty naked here, my... We all know my self-worth is pretty low. Yep. Um, but I've noticed some areas in my life where there's been improvement, like in my business and in my passions. Yep. Um, so just coming back to you then from what Paul's discussing with you, yep. 
it seems your passion and desires for divine truth to be to come onto earth is growing yep even though there's a lot of resistance blah 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 yeah but i i had this thought that that's because of your self-worth developed now i'm hearing that's not it's your passion and faith and these other areas that's bringing it forward yeah and our and our little limited ability to want to have a desire for truth in accepting that so it's like there's this contract going on yeah if, if, if we were resistance to it completely and your self-worth was where it is maybe the education wouldn't be happening right now or is, is no because my see my desire for truth and faith and my desire to take action and my humility except when it comes to the issue of self-worth um is pretty highly developed so so the reality is i'd still be teaching whether you were listening or not but um do you know what i mean like, yeah i guess i yeah uh, like i've recognized uh, i recognized years ago that's what is my passion and desire and that's what i'm going to do but um but 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 my self-worth does impact a lot about uh, upon the teachings yeah. and it impacts a lot upon your acceptance of them you, you imagine if I dealt with the issue of self-worth and I was already performing miracles and things like that, then obviously your faith would be bigger than it is now, would it not? Yes. Yeah. So, so, so the reality is my self-worth has impacted upon your faith. Yeah, get that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I've started seeing how it's having an impact on most of the people around me and the way in which they react to me and treat me and so forth and even the people who are listening it does have an effect to a fairly large extent on you you you've yet to meet me you just think you've met me and and when i've got a proper sense of my own worth then you'll meet me and you might not like me much <laughs> who knows but um but you know it's, it's going to be a very different experience than what you have now so so many of you are comfortable with me being like I am now. Yes. Does that make sense? And, um, and that's one of the reasons why um, it's been a bit difficult to shift from this place as well because I can feel the discomfort that's going to come from most people around me when I do have some worth. Because the reality is the only time in history that anybody else has had the worth that I, that I need to develop is me in the first century. So, and pretty much everyone around me is pretty confronted about that. Um, so, so, yeah, it's going to be an interesting period of time and there'll be positives, there'll be a lot of positives for me personally, but, but in terms of, uh, and for divine truth, there'll be a lot of positives that come out of it, but there'll also be a lot more heightened response. You know, at the moment, the world itself can respond to me the way it does because they know... It, you know the spirits that are guiding it and the world itself can feel my low sense of worth but once i have uh that sense of worth fixed it's going to be interesting to see what happens then with the way the world responds there, there will be a more polarized um response obviously yeah which is one of the things i'm afraid of yeah good so i'm having to work through those things yeah good question though paul yeah, I hope you didn't mind me sharing a little bit about that. No. All right. Okay, well, let's have a... Uh, we're, we're way, way over time. Um, we're, we're half an hour. Uh, if we have a 10-minute... So if we come back at 20 past, and then we'll just have a shortened review, and, uh, and we'll leave you with some homework.